I would like to once again welcome everybody. This is Michael. I'm the director of the Blue Sky Plan Treatment Planning Software. I'm very excited to announce that we expect to have a new release in a few weeks. It has a lot of improved functionality and many, many features. We're in the final stages of testing, and better versions of the software are available by contacting us at plan at blueskybio.com. This webinar will be reviewing the principles of 3D imaging interpretation and proper techniques for different preparations of guided surgery using 3D imaging. Presenting tonight is Ms. Cindy Bullock, a guided surgery specialist. Ms. Bullock founded Information Dental Technology, a company that helps many dentists and patients by providing treatment planning and guided surgery consulting. Without any further ado, I'd like to introduce Ms. Cindy Bullock. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thanks, everyone, for showing up tonight. I am really excited about what we're going to be covering tonight, the basic 3D imaging interpretation. I know in previous lectures we've gone over some really advanced applications for this type of technology. Uh, but I think it's important to have a solid foundation in the basic core of, of this type of technology, and that can be applied to any case that you're doing, whether it's a simple single site or even to an advanced, uh, advanced case. Um, and so, as Michael said, I'm from IDT, and uh, I've been using this type of technology since 2005. So I've seen a lot of different uh, scans from many different cone beam manufacturers, as well as medical CT images as well. Um, we also fabricate surgical guides from the software. And the surgical guides, I've come to realize over the years that it's not really a product that we sell you. It's a process uh, because it's, it's basically a new way to do surgery. It's not just a product that we can sell you and, and send you on your way. So we're going to be reviewing a lot of that today. Um, and we're going to go over the four critical postulates for guided surgery. And that starts with CBC interpretation. That's being able to navigate through a cone beam scan, interpret the slices and the different views that you see in your software uh, planning. Uh, as well as in any year cone beam scan. Um, the next uh, critical item is clinical trans radiographs, which differs from the interpretation of cone beam. The clinical translation is where you place a, an implant in the software program and you get your expected uh, clinical outcomes. And so I have some clinical uh, illustrations of that that I want to show you between the clinical translation and the actual treatment plan. Uh, in the x-rays or the radiographs. And then another one is uh, we're going to be reviewing the three methods using the type of technology. Uh, there are several different ways to approach it, so we're going to go into detail with those three. And then lastly, uh, radiographic guide construct. The radiographic guide is one of the three methods that you use for with this technology, but it's so critical that it's built properly that I want to review those steps. Um, I like to review that briefly in all of the lectures, um, just because it does make a big difference on your clinical outcome. So we'll start at the beginning. This is um, the, this image of a woman represents your 3D view, and the shadow on the wall represents the 2D or plain film. And you'll notice that in the 2D, what we're seeing is we see the woman holding a pineapple but we're missing a complete appendage. We're missing her arm and her banana. It, we're not being able to see that in the 2D view. And that's representative of a 2D image, like a periapical or panorex. And I'm going to show you some clinical um, examples of how that works. So the 3D image really shows us things that we can't see in the 2D image, such as an arm and a banana in this illustration. So the first step to this whole process is to obtain a DICOM from a CT or a cone scan. Um, and a lot of people ask me, they, a lot of people get confused as far as what's DICOM and volume and um, the different types of CT scans. So we're going to go over exactly what DICOM is when you're requesting that from your scan or from your technician. So DICOM stands for Digital Imaging Communications in Medicine. And what that means is it's just how we communicate digitally with medical images. Um, and so I'm going to show you a quick little illustration that will kind of help clarify that. So we start with a cone beam machine. 
And this can be representative of any type of cozy machine that's out there, whether it's an iCAD or a Neatome or a Kodak or, you know, any of the brands, this is representative of that. So let's say that this particular cone beam machine was built in Italy. So this cone beam machine speaks Italian. And then let's say we have a medical CT scan, and that medical CT is built in Germany. So that CT scanner speaks German. And then you have my computer. And since I'm from the United States, my computer is going to speak English. Um, and so let's say that our cone beam and our CT scan takes a, a scan of a patient. Um, and so those CT scans are sent to my computer. But since my computer doesn't speak Italian or German, it's not going to be able to read that image, even though that the image is there. So what the machine manufacturers have done is they created this translator, this little interpreter inside of each of the machines, and that's called DICOM. Is, uh, DICOM is the universal language. So these two machines have a translator that translates the images into DICOM. And then my computer has software called DICOM Viewers, and those DICOM Viewers read the language DICOM. So it doesn't matter what machine, CT, cone beam, the, the images are coming from, my computer will be able to read it. So when you're, requ when you're requesting a DICOM scan or the DICOM images, series of DICOM images from your scan center or from your technician, um, that's what you're saying is I want the image of the patient in a universal language that I can use in any platform. So that's, that's basically DICOM. It does mean that you're getting the scan and you're getting the volume of the patient. It's just a universal language. Once we receive the DICOM, we can create 3D images and we can slice the data in any direction that we want. And I'm going to cover slices more in detail. But what we're looking at in this first one is called an axial slice. And we're going to use that a lot in treatment planning. Um, the other two, the coronal and sagittal views, we don't use that as much in treatment planning because the view that we use is a mixture of the two. It's a mixture of coronal and sagittal. What it does is it takes a slice. Each of the slices run perpendicular to the buccolingual plate across the arch. And so as we move posterior to anterior, anterior to posterior, those views are going to change from sagittal to coronal um, as, as you go through the arch. And so we just call those slices simply cross-sectional views. And that's what you're going to see in the software program is axial views, cross-sectional views, and then a panorex, which you guys are all familiar with, and the 3D view. So another question that has come up quite a bit is what's the difference between cone beam and uh, CT scans, the medical CT scans? So I'm going to illustrate this. The top image represents a cone beam scan. And you'll notice in the cone beam scan, the red is the beam, and the beam covers an entire area. So let's say this is a six inch or a nine inch scan of temporal mandibular joints. Um, and you can see that it's just one shot and it covers that entire area. Down below represents the medical CT scan. And they use what's called a fan beam instead of a cone beam. And what that does is you can see it's covering a very small area comparatively to the cone beam. So it takes that, that uh, scan, and then the beam rotates up just slightly. It overlaps the lower beam and takes another image. And then it rotates up again, overlaps the lower layer, and takes another image until it's completed the entire 9-inch view that we're looking at. Um, and then those are stitched together. So those are the basic differences. Um, as far as how they scan. Now, the cone beam, one of the big differences in uh, clarity with the cone beam is the field of view size. So the field of view, I have two examples here. As you can see, the, as the cone beam covers the entire anatomy, um, the field of view down below, I have a 12 inch and a 6 inch. And on both of these, the 12 inch, there's a lot more to the scan that's what, than what's being seen. This is a cropped out image focused on one area, just so you can compare the difference between the 12 inch and the six inch. And you'll notice the six inch is much clearer than the 12 inch. It's a lot sharper, you have greater detail. And so when you're working with a cone beam scan, the smaller the field of view, the clearer the image is gonna be. So as far as placing implants, we're going to work with a six-inch uh, field of view and sometimes smaller, depending on the type of scanner that you're using. Now, that's not to say that a six-inch is going to be clearer than a five-inch on a different machine. 
there are a lot of different things that affect image clarity and also radiation. Um, there's different designs in the hardware of the machine, such as pulse technology, safe beam, focal point. Number of images captured is a big one, too, and then FOV or field of view. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of those, but if, if you are curious, uh, give me a call and I can discuss those. But for sake of time tonight, just know that there are different hardware designs to each of the machines that uh, do change radiation levels and image clarity significantly. Um, so this is just a, a view of what uh, the representation of what a fan beam would look like. And you can see on the left side that um, that just represents the different layers that are being taken with a fan beam or the medical CT. And then they're stitched together and you get a nice 3D view of that. So these concepts between the cone beam and the CT um, advantages are very applicable to guided surgery. And you'll kind of see why as we go through the slides um, how that applies. But the CDCT advantage, they both have advantages and disadvantages. CDCT or cone beam, the biggest advantage to that is that it has much lower radiation than a CT. Um, it's so low that we're not able to diagnose soft tissue pathology. You can see soft tissue pathology, but it's not clear enough to be able to diagnose it. Um, and, and another advantage to low radiation is that the scatter and, and also the cone beam field is that scatter is minimized quite a bit at the crown level. And also cone beam machines, the in-office machines are much more affordable than a, say, a medical CT that you want to install. Um, the CT advantages, though, are, is that you have much higher detail in them because they're a higher radiation, so you're going to get a lot clearer um, image to that. High densities in CT do not affect the entire scan. And I'm going to show you some slides and some radiographs that actually represent what I mean by that. But um, those are the basic two advantages to the medical CT scan. Um, <clears throat> the, the lower radiation is probably the, the biggest thing that we're looking at because there are things with a higher radiation level and a higher clarity that we really don't need to see in a cone beam or for dental applications, um, for any dental modalities for that matter. When I say it's lower radiation, this is a, this part that really compares, what puts that into comparative. Um, the new tome is a cone beam machine that's highlighted in blue. And you'll see that the effective dose is 45 microsieverts. And that's equivalent to only seven panorexes. And if you go down the list, you'll see CT Mandible and CT Maxilla is 2,100 or 1,400 microsieverts, respectively. Um, so that's significantly more than what we're looking at for a cone beam. And the equivalent in Panorex doses is 385 or 164. So there's significant enough difference that cone beam is pretty significant or sufficient for dental application. And if we look at 2D information, um, one more, more, more of the stuff that you guys are used to using, the pan, the staff, we're looking at 7 to 25 microsieverts. And if you throw in a full mouth, uh, you're looking at 30 to 45 microsieverts. So in this particular study, the new tone cone beam was 58 microsieverts. And so when we're comparing them, it's relatively low. And even if we look at the annual, annual natural radiation, it's 3,000 microsieverts a year. So we're looking at very, very low numbers with a cone beam machine. And the nice thing about that is we can pull out different reconstructions for all the different types of modalities. So this is one for orthodontics. There's different reconstruction that we can do. And as you can see, there's a lot of different slices and views that you can pull from only one cone beam machine or one cone beam scan. And here's a list of all the different types of clinical applications for cone beam. You'll notice there's um, endodontic application, temporal mandibular disorders, orthognathic surgery. Tonight we're going to focus on implants, but just so you have an idea of how this can relate to different referrals, referring um, doctors that you work with. So we'll get into the CBCT interpretation. Uh, when I've seen over the years, I've worked with a lot of different software programs. And over the years, I've seen this happen a lot, where doctors, when I come in and we're looking at a case, and I see them treatment planning only off of the 3D model, um, 